Let's get going then. So functional group update for the infrastructure team. Um, I cannot see the chat window, by the way, so I'll have to come to the questions later on. <clears throat> Topics I want to cover today is the overarching goals for the infrastructure team, uh, accomplishments, uh, things we're working on, and then concerns. And I've actually combined the concerns and the slash need help. So first, the overarching goal for the infrastructure team is to make GitLab.com ready for mission critical tasks, right? So users of GitLab.com and customers on GitLab.com should come to trust GitLab.com to the extent that it is mission critical. They can use it, they can always rely on it. So this won't happen overnight. And for the next couple of quarters, we'll be focusing on these three goals over here. And they are in the OKRs for uh, the team at large. Uh, other groups can also contribute to these OKRs, but certainly infrastructure will be working on, on these goals. One is to uh, raise the availability of GitLab.com to 99.9% .9 and keep it there. We've been hovering around 99.7, 99.76. Um, it becomes increasingly difficult, exponentially so, as you add more decimal places there. 99% of user web requests should be served in less than one second. Currently, it's hovering around two, 2.5 seconds. And the top 10 actions from the risk assessment should be completed. The risk assessment is linked there. Um, all right, so what have we done since the last time we gave a functional group update, which was about six weeks ago? First of all, Ilya started as a production engineer. Um, and we also have two additional senior production engineers joining uh, very soon, June 15th and August 1st, names to be revealed on the next functional group update. In the security team, speaking on behalf of Brian here, uh, I linked to the meta issue where I'm keeping track of the top 10, current top 10 uh, security actions, and 4.5 out, out of 10 have been completed. Uh, a couple of them are going to take a long time. They involve large features being developed, and others uh, uh, actually have some, some potential for quick wins. So I encourage people to take a look at that meta issue and contribute if you can. Uh, in the last six weeks, Brian tested Teleport and decided against using it. The issue is linked there for access management. So now uh, we're going the way of setting up a, a VPN network instead. In the database team, uh, Yorick uh, has been very busy. Uh, PG Bouncer was shipped in 9.2. Nested groups were reworked. These were Yorick's words, but Stan added uh, the little footnote there. It's more than just reworking. He rewrote how we calculate project authorizations and made them fast and consistent. So that's that was great work by Yorick. Um, support for nested groups in MySQL was dropped. I should probably change the wording of this slide before we send it out to the rest of the world. Oh, already changed it, uh, Ernst. OK, thank you, Sid. And uh, just FYI, storing serialized data in the database is no longer allowed. That's uh, just one of three slides of accomplishments in production, a lot of different things. Um, I've, uh, I've linked to each of them. I think uh, the ones that I'm personally most excited about is the fact that uh, we have complete terraformation of the front end fleet and staging, which enabled the team to very quickly make canary.gitlab.com um, within a few hours actually, which is a small step in the direction of a larger meta goal of having multiple canary deployments run through Kubernetes. Um, there's important work going on, on, of course, backups and resiliency. So disaster recovery for the package server, snapshotting of the file system. We've introduced a new workflow within the production engineering team to help prioritize and coordinate work using issue boards and milestones, but um, adapting it to a bit of a Kanban style. And we've also introduced a change, man pro change management process to make changes in production. Um, the idea of this uh, uh, set of guidelines on how to make changes in production and a checklist to, to help you when you're making a change in production is that it becomes really low friction, really easy um, to make a change in production. And the Gitly team used it successfully to introduce changes with review by production engineers, but no intervention by production engineers. Of course, it helps that the Gitly team has production expertise in their team, but still. I think this is an awesome, uh, an awesome move in the right direction. And the final slide of accomplishments, Gitterly. Oh, what happened to the plot? Ah, I see it was moved to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, Andrew, actually, I'd like to invite you to speak to the test that you did with Gitterly running on the NFS servers. 
if you're cool. here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, so basically what we did was we're quite interested to see what would happen if we kind of cut NFS out of the equation. Um, and so what we did was we installed Gitterly on our NFS servers, um, and then we reconfigured one of the Git workers to use, um, to basically go directly to Gitterly on the NFS servers in order to, to fetch some data. And we ran that test for about half an hour um, and compared the times on that Git worker versus the rest of the fleet to see what the differences were. Um, and so this first slide, what you can see is that for the median value, they're pretty close. So it's, it's um, a one point, a 0 0.12 seconds versus 0 0.14 seconds for your median request between NFS and not NFS. Um, but then when, where it becomes more interesting is when we take the 99 percentile value, um, you can see there that the, the red one, which is the, um, the network Gidley worker, um, that's basically 99% of all requests came in within 0 0.7 seconds. Um, and the black bar is um, NFS Gidley workers, and that's uh, 1.9 seconds. So what we saw is our P99 uh, values dropped drastically. Um, and I've just got one more graph, Ernst, if you could click forward. Um, and that's just a, another graph that shows latency over time during our test. Um, so it's a bit small, but um, the blue is the average time that a, that a Giddily call took. Um, on the left-hand side, that is our test uh, host. And on the right-hand side, that's the control host, which is the rest of the fleet. Um, and then again, the green line is the 99th percentile graph. And you can see those are to scale. You can see that the left-hand side is obviously vastly better than the right-hand side in terms of speed and performance. So those tests were quite a success. Um, there is more work to be done with like CPU-bound Git endpoints, but we'll get there. Um, that'll be the next set of tests that we do. And that's, that's really it, Ernst. Thank you, Andrew. Cool. All right, so what are we working on? A whole host of things. Uh, one that's top of mind for me specifically is performance generally and making sure that we have it mapped out uh, in terms of what exactly happens when you, when you make a web request and what are we measuring and, and are we working on the right things. There's been a lot of efforts in this direction already. So uh, retreading some of that and, and fleshing it out in more detail. Um, a couple of things highlighted here for, for the individual teams. Uh, production, of course, working on preventing Redis outages after having applied a Band-Aid. Continuing work towards those Canary deployments with Kubernetes that I, uh, I referred to earlier. Um, there's a lot of work on the database side. Uh, there's a lot of slow queries, and there's an overview issue there. As you're probably aware, we're working with an outside consultancy to help us uh, get better performance from our database. So there's a lot of tasks that have flowed from that. And, uh, and Yorick wanted to make sure that everybody knows that uh, polymorphic associations will soon no longer be allowed. On the security side of things, as I mentioned earlier, uh, creating a VPN. And if you're interested in uh, additional topics, please visit the meta issue and, and go from there or visit the risk assessment sheet itself and go from there. Uh, and the Gitly team will continue working on migrations, more metrics, more logging. That's going to be an ongoing effort for, for quite a while. So what are the things that we're concerned about or that we need help on? We need more people. So there's a lot of work to be done on the database side. We're hiring database specialists, security specialists. Um, we have positions open for both director of infrastructure to replace me and director of security. So please send along your candidates, send along uh, great people with great records, uh, great work records to, uh, to join our team. Um, in the, um, the focus on performance, it's, uh, it's a concern to me in the sense that it's going to lead to a number of follow-on issues and ideas of things to be fixed that go far beyond the infrastructure team. So there's not a specific ask there yet, but it's, it's a concern. Uh, I do have a specific concern right now about adding more NFS servers, increasing the odds of an outage. We just added four uh, Git NFS servers. Each one of them has a specific SLA an outage of any one of them causes an outage of all of gitlab.com. Um, so that's a concern, and I've, I've created an issue there for graceful degradation of the service. 
Gisli is concerned about uh, migrating routes that are in the process of being deprecated. This happened very recently, and it essentially nullified a lot of work by the Gitli team. So um, Andrew and, and team is thinking about better ways of finding out which routes are at risk of being deprecated in order to not work on those. Uh, and then there's also problems with, with gRPC that continue to affect the team. So with that, I will escape from presentation mode and see if there are questions in the chats.